Welcome back, everybody. It is a glorious day here on the Glorious Sunrise Podcast. My name is Kevin. I'm joined, as always, by my amazing, better-looking partner in crime, John. John, how you doing, bud? Dude, the day that you don't open it that way, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like great, I pigeonholed bud. myself into only introing that way now. <laughs> you um, have to for now, on, man. I didn't my mean to. Can't take the downfall. I <laughs> 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 no, oh, appreciate man. it, brother. I'm doing great, man. Are you I'm excited glad, about man. this one? Dude, I am so stoked. Guys, uh, All Will Be One is going to be releasing a week from when this podcast drops, and we are both tremendously excited. I think it's safe to say we're both tremendously excited for the new set. Uh, there's a lot of crazy cars. There's a lot of crazy stuff that's going to be coming out here. It's a great look back at the the new Phyrexia setting uh, with a lot of the favorite characters returning, including Ellis Norn, my personal favorite, uh, but who is not on this list. And today's list, we're going to be talking talking about our top three picks for standard build arounds or standard cards that are going to be hitting with this new set uh, again releasing February 7th on arena and February 10th uh, in paper so guys get stoked share your ideas share your favorite cards in the comment section below so that way we can also have a talk about your favorite cards and maybe some of the build arounds that you've got but uh, this is going to be I think the start of a really fun era in magic with this new set coming out I'm excited I'm really stoked yeah man yeah i'm looking forward to it. any any type of shake up all the time yeah uh i think it's safe to say too to set some context uh which may not be necessary but i feel uh, get a chip off my shoulder i think uh you and i have both felt <laughs> again i'm speaking for you a little bit here but i know no. uh in december at the very least and i think going into standard uh at the beginning of the year we've both felt like man it's just the same stuff over and over uh and it's a little frustrating because you know you're fighting the same decks over and over again you may play the same deck over and over again despite you know changing a card or two the idea is still basically the same uh and so i know for me personally i've been pushing completely outside of standard and going to historic uh on mm -hmm. the videos just to kind of get away from it uh, i didn't want to get burnt out and i know you're kind of feeling the same way on live streams and things like that are you not Oh, no, no, it's an absolute dollar. It's an absolute <laughs> fact, man. Um, yeah, yesterday's live stream, or well, let's see. So this would release on Tuesday. So this last Thursday's live stream, um, man, it was bad, dude. I, I think I went 0-6. Oh, <laughs> God. Of three, bro. Oh, you no. Know, man. Dude, it's it's brutal out there, man. It's yeah. it, 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 but it was literally like setting through one of those days where it was like, thanks, Arena. Thanks for doing this for me. Yeah. Because yeah. you weren't <laughs> top decking into any answers. You weren't pulling anything <laughs> correctly. And no matter how many you. puzzles you tried to put together in your head, you were not winning. So yeah. it was wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement is real nah guys i think it's safe to say um even outside of just the it resolves channel i know a lot of people it seems are feeling that kind of like okay we're we're just slugging through it until we get to the new set and i think we're finally there it's really exciting because again there are so many great cards in here which made this episode a lot harder uh because today we decided last time we did this on the podcast i think we picked a mm -hmm. card of each color uh, including multicolor artifacts, lands, all that stuff. We kind of shook things up this time and we basically limited ourselves to the top three. Um, and I'll be honest, mine are in no particular order, but uh, I did have to narrow it down quite a bit because there were so many cards that I wanted to put on this list um, because there's so much good stuff in this set. I mean, there's so much. It's ridiculous. A lot to be excited for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man, um, there is. Uh, I, I did pick... Hmm. I don't know if I picked what was my favorite as opposed to what I think are going to be some shakeups for the game. Gotcha. No, that's fair, that's though. I, I think, think that's I fair. Um, and I think for each of these, I know in particular for the three that I picked, um, I picked them each for different reasons, whether it be, you know, ridiculous potential out of the card, um, just a good kind of check for the meta in one case, which I think is always a good thing. Um, and then just a couple of other, you know, 
what what can we build with this and is it going to be good or is it going to be silly or something like that and so when we go into this list guys we're talking about this at least i can say my list there are cards that i'm excited about not that i'm expecting to be the absolute best in the meta um mm -hmm. i do think they have some potential don't get me wrong but that's not the way i went about making this list i went through it just saying okay these are cards i'm excited to build around cards that i think will be good for various reasons uh and that i hope will be fun to to play in the new meta so just keeping that in mind as we jump into this but john do we want to do we want to jump right in yeah man we don't have any idea what each other picked either so we no we don't level one up but it, that would be funny but man yeah <laughs> let's jump into it because it was so hard dude there i mean yeah. i could literally sit here and talk about probably three quarters <laughs> of the set and where yeah. i would like to see it land but uh you know more videos to come once it releases oh absolutely there i um do you do you want to do you want to go first or do you want me to go first i should ask yeah i can go first go for it yeah so uh first up i'm going with uh two colorless one blue ichor moon gauntlet it's an artifact and uh it reads planeswalkers you control have zero which means you could pro proliferate or negative 12 take an extra turn after this one and whenever you cast a non-creature spell choose a counter on target permanent and put an additional counter of that kind on that permanent so the reason i selected ichor moon gauntlet with that text and everything is just kind of because broker's ascendancy and to fairy and just kind of how i think bant's in a really good spot to take a lot of advantage of this card uh, especially with the proliferate and everything and then if you throw in something like a thumbing bird or you start with the toxic counters and start to proliferate off of that as well so yeah, yeah man i like ichor moon gauntlet plus it works really well in salt with the uh proliferate as well uh yeah. something we've been talking about all over the place is uh toxic toxicrel has been out of the picture for a while and toxic slime counters can be proliferated so i don't know man proliferate when we had it before when it first entered into magic um it never really took its place in standard but it did a lot of stuff outside of the standard format so i'd be interested to see if it can shake its way in uh, a permanent spot in standard this time around do you think, because um, you bring up a great point here, um, and first of all, I will say that card is not on my list. It was mm -hmm. uh, a last minute cut from my list, I will say. It was very high up there. Um, so do you think Proliferate, because you bring up a good point, with Standard in previous years, we have had Proliferate, right? This is a returning ability. We've had it for quite some time in the in the Magic uh, mechanics world. But um, as you said, in Standard, it really wasn't pushed as hard as maybe it it could have been or it didn't make waves as much as it maybe could have. Um, do we feel this time around or do you feel this time around that the, there's enough proliferate in the set or more proliferate in the set to make more of a push? Or do we feel it's going to hit kind of in the same position where it might be used as like a tech piece? It might be used here and there, but it's probably not, you know, its own build or as focused as it needed to be to still take over standard or or be a prominent player, not take over. <laughs> Yeah, no, look, just having having played during the time when it came in, um, I think it's going to be very techy. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be kind of the outlier. Um, I don't see a prominent piece that makes it like, oh, this is going to be meta. Sure. Uh, but it's definitely going to be fun for content creators. Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh I still think it's missing a couple of pieces that would make it meta. Now, is that to say that we end up with a meta deck with proliferate? I mean, it's possible. It's sure. kind of like what, the reason why we're where we're at right now with how we feel about standard. There are so many people playing it now yeah. and you got so many eyes on it. I mean, give it two weeks of this release and then watch, man, I'm sitting here saying it's going to be an outlier. Somebody's going to find an infinite combo within two <laughs> weeks and it's going to be the meta deck of the century. Yeah. So. Um, I still, though, I think it's, I, I just kind of think it's borderline. I think, I think it's fun. I think it's tech. I think it works really well in other formats, mm -hmm. but I think standards missing some really important pieces. However, proliferate with all the counters going on that we got right now could go really crazy. Yeah. Uh, especially with like Azorius, Azorius soldiers. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, that thing's got so many counters tossing around on it. Uh, don't let it find a way to proliferate, man. Oh, yeah. my God. We'll never see the end of that deck. <laughs> <laughs> so, so. 
Well, I'm actually going to segue a little bit here into my first pick because mm-hmm. the the gauntlet, I think. <clears throat> Um, Now I'm speculating a little bit because I haven't made a build out of this yet, but uh, I think it actually in a weird way goes surprisingly well with both Teferi and the card that I chose, uh, which is All Will Be One, the namesake card of the set. Excuse me while I look to my right uh, because that's where the card is and I need to read it. Um, (laughs) Okay, All Will Be One. It's an enchantment for three and two red. Uh, Whenever you put one or more counters on a permanent or player, all will be one deals that much damage to target opponent, creature and opponent controls, or planeswalker and opponent controls. Pretty straightforward enchantment, but uh, mm-hmm. one of the interactions that that came up in looking through the set and, and obviously the cards is Teferi, right? We know Teferi, every time you draw a card, it puts a counter on it, which means every time you draw a card, even without the ability from Teferi, you're putting a counter on it, and with this on the field, equates to damage. Uh, and that damage, as we read, can go basically anywhere you need it to go. Um, and so to me, what kind of came out of this was uh, with the gauntlet, which can proliferate and kind of add to those counters um, with that and with Teferi and with this on the field, you're starting to get to a position where you kind of just draw a bunch, get to the cards you need to get mm-hmm. to. And as a sub, you know, kind of a an add on or attack on bonus, you're just kind of nuking the opponent for damage every single time you do. Um, now, that requires some setup, right? This is a five mana spell. Teferi's a five mana spell. Uh, the Gauntlet is a three mana spell. So you are looking at quite a bit of commitment in terms of you know trying to get stuff on the field, protect it, those kinds of things. But uh, assuming you're running counters, which in an it build is not that difficult to do, uh, assuming you're running all that kind of stuff, like I feel like there's a build here, um, and it may, may not just be regulated to is it. It may be you know mm-hmm. American control. I don't know something like that, but. Uh, I think you run into a position where you really start to build um, this kind of combo style control deck where you just take over at some point down the line. Uh, and this really does set you up nicely to do that. Uh, and so I saw that interaction. I saw a couple people talking about it. I was like, oh, that that's got to be on the list. Plus, it's the namesake card, right? Like, you got to you got to have that on the list. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I understand. You Look, know what I, I like mean. It. I do like it. I, I agree, though, man. Um, I got to be honest, uh, even with standard over the past season, uh, while while we were waiting for this to come out, I was surprised we didn't see any galvanic iteration, big score to fairy type uh, yeah. control. Is it deck list? Um, yeah. I thought it was prime for it, um, but man, it's just a lot of the deck lists that we've got right now are so low to the ground and so fast yeah. at getting to their objective. Like Rafine, mm-hmm. I mean, Rafine's not super fast, but you get a Rafine down and your game plan comes together so fast, but Azoria soldiers is fast. Mono yeah. black yeah. is fast. Who would have thought? Yeah. Uh, I mean, just, there's a lot of fast stuff. So uh, yeah, I think there's some pieces in the puzzle here to shake it up. Uh, I would definitely like to see something come out of, is it or just guy? I was really glad that I didn't see anything that would bring Hanada back into the game yet. But, I didn't uh, either. Yeah. I was looking at God. that. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't want an auto back. <laughs> I will say too, to your point, you know, you're exactly right. The meta right now really lends itself to a, I, I, I hesitate to say aggro, but definitely a faster format, right? Like a lot of the best yeah. of one in particular is very mm-hmm. quick. Um, and I do think in, even in best of uh, best of three traditional standard, we still see a lot of that. I think if this deck is to have any real success, it's probably going to be closer into the traditional standard. I don't think it would really work in best of one. I feel like you'd have to get a little lucky because you are trying mm-hmm. to like culminate a handful of pieces here, right? Like it's not just that you you need one card down and then play another card it's like now you kind of have to have two or three cards down and then play draw cards and then play stuff um so it's one of those where i think you know you made the point proliferates kind of a content creator's dreamland where you get to play around with a really fun idea i feel like this is in the same vein right like this is kind of a fun idea i think it can work and i do think you know there is a build around this that i think will probably be seen in the early uh stages of of the new set at the very least um but i think people might be able to kind of kind of play with it a little bit and see what we can come up with as the as the set comes out and i think it'll be fun 
Oh yeah, man. My, my ADHD is loving this moment right now. <laughs> just because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is, it's just, a, this set is really good. It's got yes. so many toys. Yeah. It does, does it have anything standard significant that's going to break the meta or break into the meta? I, we still have yet to see, but uh, it has a lot of stuff for people that want to brew and just kind of yeah. have fun on the side and stuff just to see if they can make things happen. So yeah, really for looking sure. forward to some of this stuff. Yep. 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 All right. You're up. Number two. What do we got? I got to clear my throat. Hang on. Just <laughs> <laughs> now's a great time to mention that we have our 10,000 stuff giveaway. <laughs> we do have a 10,000 subscriber giveaway while John is laughing that off. Uh, that go. is going on right now, guys. So if you aren't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. Uh, also, if you happen to be listening on the podcast app or anything like that, we do have video versions of this podcast. So you can check those out on our YouTube channel. Anyway, John. Go ahead. Sorry. There you go. I had to Way get to that the selfless Way promotion. To fill the in air, man. Hell yes. yeah. Yes. Uh, next up, I think this one is a possible meta changer. Um, I think this one puts something back on the on the map because, uh, oh. man, this is a significant three drop. Oh. This is two colorless, one green, bloated contaminator. It is a creature for Axiom Beast. It's four four. For three, two colors, oh. one green. It has trample. It has toxic one. And then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, proliferate. Yes. Dude, I love this card, man. <laughs> uh, look, green didn't, I, I never really saw anything in green that had a significant three drop spot for a while, uh, like uh, Graveyard Trespasser or Wedding Announcement yeah. or, you know, of course, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Now, I don't think this takes Fable of the Mirror Breaker. But yeah. green's got a pretty nice curve. I mean, you can go into this, yeah. into Album Walled Oddity, into Workshop, into, you know, I mean, it, just, it can just keep going up yep. to Titan. You could do some fight rigging stuff with this. I love I love it, man. I think green's back on the map, man. I actually, oh, for sure. I am not an aggro player. I'm not a really <laughs> big green player. Same. But... Uh, this makes me want to try green as possible. I mean, like one of my first two decks. I, so I, this, this segue is going to work so beautifully because I, again, guys, I just want to clarify, we don't know each other's picks here before no. we go into this, but this works out so nicely. Again, I did not pick your card, but I want to continue the conversation that you've started with mono green and we can, we can talk about your card further as we're also talking about this. Uh, but I want to bring up my second card really quick before we do, uh, Thrun breaker of silence. All right, so hear me out on this, uh, because I think this is twofold. So first and foremost, let me read it. Three and two green, legendary creature, troll shaman. Cannot be countered. Uh, does have trample. It is a 5-5. Five five. It also can't be the target of non-green spells your opponents control or abilities yeah. from non-green sources your opponents control. That's huge. Additionally, as long as it's your turn, it has indestructible which means instant speed, yeah. just removal on your turn is really not going to do it. Counter spells are not going to do it. It's the classic Thrun stuff where it's so anti-control, it's amazing. Uh, so here, here's my thing. To your point, because you brought mm -hmm. up a really nice three drop slot for the deck, the mono green in particular, but I think it goes elsewhere as well. This, I think... And best of one slots itself really nicely into sort of a top ish end of mono green. I don't think it's amazing in mono green in general, but I do think it fits in. OK, here's my thing, though. In traditional standard, if you're looking at best of three, this is such a solid option for any deck running. Oh, green. yeah. Always oh, have yeah. this, whether it's I, it can be in your sideboard. Right. But mm -hmm. like you need this card. And any deck running green because well, it will it take had? out control. What was it that we had a while back? Was it Triceratops? What was the one that? Oh, the blew, uh, yeah, the you blue. can give it like it can't be countered, and you can give it protection from blue or something. Yeah, I mean it was a sideboard staple for best of three. Yeah, now it what's was uh, remind me again? What was the casting cost on throne? It's three and two green. Three and two green, so it's five. Five mana for a five five okay. trailer. <laughs> Don't forget that Storm the Festival's out there, guys. Yes. Ren yes. Seven, Great Workshop call. War Chief, um, Titan, 
uh, just yeah. a side note for honorable mention, Tyranax <laughs> Rex. Yes. That an 8-8 eight, eight for 7. An 8-8 eight, eight for counter, 7. <laughs> trample, Ward 4, Haste, Toxic yeah. 4. I'm going to beat you and your nephews. It's crazy, <laughs> man. It's crazy, so, dude. The reason I wanted to go ahead and mention this was because you brought up a really great solid 3-drop option for Mono Green. I mm -hmm. think Mono Green as a whole got so many tools in this set or is getting so many tools in this set i think there's a lot to love about mono green i also think a lot of these cards though fit in not just mono green builds like to your point any proliferate deck that can get that down is probably going to be able to capitalize on it if it's an aggressive proliferate deck right um yeah. the the thrun ability is just really good in any control matchup because you just need to to beat control so like there's a lot mm -hmm. of um really good tools that i think can culminate to a really solid mono green build but i actually think where a lot of these cards are going to find themselves is in like multicolor builds that are focused on particular things whether it be proliferate in your case or you know sideboard tech with thrun things like that um and i think yeah. that's it's just fascinating mono green or green cards in general not mono green uh got quite a bit of a, a boost i think in this set which was needed yeah but i still think i still think what slows mono green down right now is we don't have like a really solid i mean there's ramp out there yeah. There's ramp oh, yeah. out there, but there's not a really solid, there's not a cultivate or anything like that. There's not, no. you don't have, um, what is it? The hexproof druid elf, whatever. Uh, paradise they, druid. Yeah. The one drop. I mean, we don't oh, have oh. you know, yeah. our birds of paradise. We don't, and, you yeah. know, it doesn't have a one drop <laughs> mana booster. However, it does have a uh, land war. So, yeah. uh, or loam speaker. Um, the thing that I liked about bloated contaminator though, is and what I alluded to with the fight rigging is that mm -hmm. if this does damage, you just put a plus one, plus one counter on this thing <laughs> with fight rigging and now, now you you're going to proliferate it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think it works really well with like topiary stomper and both of those being able mm -hmm. to enable uh reckoner bank buster and, yeah. um, in for the attack or for the draw or whatever you want to do. Um, yeah, man, I think, I think mono greens, yeah, I just think it's going to be fun, dude. I think yeah. it's going to be, I think it's kind of back to the age where here, I'm just going to vomit my whole deck on the board and you deal with yeah. it. So see if you can, right? Like that's yeah. the goal. Uh, yeah. no, I totally agree. I, I, I think there's a lot, I mean, we, we can go on for days about how many fun tools, you know, this set brings to the table, but I do think mon or green cards in particular have gotten a lot of, uh, I don't know. It's not even I mean, it's tech, I guess, is the best way to describe it. I, I don't know, but it just feels like they're getting a lot of tools for the toolbox that they really needed. And to your point, mm -hmm. I do think ramp is kind of still on the backswing, right? Like it's not great, um, yeah. but there's some, the limb speakers there. There's a couple things there that might be able to work. And so, you know, to get that fight rigging down and some big creatures is like not that difficult. <laughs> and so I imagine we will definitely be seeing a push in that direction, at least in the beginning uh, to, to see what we get. So I'm excited well, about that. Still got arguably one of the best protection spells. Uh, Tamio safekeeping hits yeah, any so permanent. Good. Any yeah, permanent. Any permanent. It's ridiculous. So you can you can protect your Ren and seven. You can protect your fight rigging. You can protect yeah. your creatures. It's, you know. It's great. So it's I think really green's good. in a really good spot, man. Yeah. Uh, I was really happy to see. I, well, I really not a big mono green player, <laughs> man, but I was really getting excited seeing some of this stuff come out for green. I was like, God, get yeah. bigger. I like <laughs> so. traditionally every time a new set comes out, I always like one of the first decks that I try and run is generally a mono green deck um, only because it's one of the easiest to build, right? Um, yeah. And so it's one of those where you can easily put out there and if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. It doesn't matter. The The idea is kind of the same no matter what. Um, mm -hmm. I do think in this case, while you can just go basic mono green stompy probably pretty easily, I do think there's a lot more options for mono green and that you can, to your point, go fight rigging proliferate, go, you know, different styles of mono green, which might be a little yeah. more interesting to start with. So um, I'm kind of curious to see where that lands because there's a lot of tools a lot of tools yeah for it. yeah and even side note man take a look at gruel oh my god yes yes gruel. Oof. so good <laughs> i'm so, so disgusted good. right now i know it's <laughs> so, great um it's yeah. a great thing 
Uh, well, I kind of hijacked your green a little bit, so no, I apologize. Uh, but your last card, what are we looking at? Okay, so a real quick honorable mention just because I Oh, yeah, her. please. Gliss is coming back. That card's going to be beast. I wanted to put her on my list, and I didn't. She's going to be beast. But yeah. that's my honorable mention, so I'm not going to dive into Glissa. But I am going <laughs> to actually, I'm going to build it, and I'm going to play it. But, uh, <laughs> that was my honorable mention. Okay. Um, Meta Warping. Meta Warping is my last card. Hmm. If you guys have not played against this, get ready. Because Mono Black just got one of the biggest boosts it possibly could have gotten. <laughs> Phyrexian Arena, one colorless, yeah. two black, enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and lose one life. And if you got Shieldry down, you don't give a damn. Yep. <laughs> That's a so, card plus a life. <laughs> Yep, just gave fuel to one yeah. of the hardest decks to play against in the meta right now. Well, it's not super hard to play against, but it's still a super powerful deck. It, yeah. It's got all of its steps. It's got its curves. Well, cool. Now you just help it curve out even better. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I wanted to do, um, I was thinking about Veraska's Fall. Uh, it's yeah. the two colorless, one black instant where each opponent sacrifices a creature, a planeswalker, and a poison counter. But mm -hmm. uh, it's good, but I think that's going to be situational. And I don't know that that's necessarily going to come in standard. Not when you've got something like um, Invoke Despair still on the board. Yeah. Invoke Despair yeah, yeah. just absolutely eats that card alive. So yep. I think uh, as far as three, and it's a three drop too, which you've already got like Graveyard Trespasser and stuff like that. Um, I still think Phyrexian Arena is, oh, man. Oh, it's a it's a war. All the cards Black, you could yeah. have reprinted. What the hell were you doing? That was a big one. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. It's man. that's crazy to me that they put that in standard only because. And guys, look, if you're new to the game, um, because I do think you know, relatively speaking, there's always a handful of new players and stuff like that. Uh, Phyrexian Arena is a card that's been around for quite some time. I don't re even remember when it was first printed, but it was a long time ago. Um, Phyrexian Arena in any mono black build where you're gaining an extra card every turn is ridiculous, right? Like it's I can't express to you how good that is, especially in a mono black build that we already have that is already really good. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And so I just want to reiterate that, you know, if you're new and you're not really recognizing how powerful that might be, trust me when I say it is. Uh, I do think um, to your point, you know, mono black is the obvious choice, right? You put it in mono black. It's just going to make your deck better, especially with Shieldred. I do think we're going to mm -hmm. see more Shieldreds in the in the decks now because um, I have seen a couple that don't run, you know, they run it as like a one or two of I wouldn't I would anticipate that number going up because of Phyrexian <laughs> Arena. Um, because curving into Phyrexian Arena then Shieldred is like ridiculously yeah, that well, that possibility is insane. Um, but I also think it hits in control, uh, not just mono black. I think you can get into multicolor control decks and get a Phyrexian Arena there, and you are just in such a good position. Um, so just there's other places I think uh, that that it will land as well. Yeah, it works really good. It, I mean, it could work really good with Demir. And yeah. Esper, maybe even Golgari. Uh, yeah. I don't know that Golgari can grab you the life gain quite as good. Um, but you do get the safekeeping to, to keep it. <laughs> true, true. But the other thing I was thinking of, what if you curve on Phyrexian Arena, you hit Shielder, and then one of the next two cards you draw on your next turn is another Phyrexian Arena. Cool, I lose two life. I draw three cards. I gain six life. Yeah. It's a it's a growth thing. Like you're exponentially growing. Yeah, you like just you just gave mono black life game. Yeah. And quit running, cut down, and put in March of Sorrows, and you got more life game. Yeah. Yeah, you're fine. Um, yeah. I am curious to see what it does to the mono black list, like just in terms of, you know, pumping up the number of shieldreds as an example or taking out some different spells to put in those Phyrexian arenas. Cause one thing I will mention is that the mono black shell. Um, while you always see a little bit of, you know, sway in the numbers of certain cards and things like that, 
it's a pretty solid build, right? Like we have a great mono blacklist and it's not easy to swap some of those cards out. Now, I do think to mm -hmm. your point, some removal is pretty easy to, to push out if you needed to and things like that. So I think we'll just see a, a downtick in that. But um, I'm, I'm curious what that does to the final builds for the most part. I think it's going to be interesting. I don't know, man. Um, I like Graveyard Trespasser. I'm a huge fan. Yeah. This is this outweighs Graveyard Trespasser to me. Uh, I've, that's I've bold. played against it. I've played against it, man. I've played against it. I've played it. Yeah. I love this card when I'm playing Commander. Uh, this card. Guess what's not in my Commander deck? Graveyard <laughs> Trespasser. <laughs> so this, I, I, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think people understand the power of this card, man. I think, I mean, I, go, I don't, I'm not saying it takes out all the graveyard trespassers. No, I think you need a three drop threat, right? But I'm telling you, man, I'd move evolve sleeper to three. I'd move underdog to three. I'd move trespasser to three and I'd mm -hmm. put in three for X in arenas and I would probably go three or four on Shieldred, maybe a, one or two Liliana's maybe because you got the card draw and yeah. now you can do the discard a whole you lot better on your easier. opponents. So does that take the slot of a trespasser? Um, I probably wouldn't even play Soren anymore in any build of no, that because think you this it, takes right? the place of your card draw. Yep. And it's so, efficient, more efficient. Oh yeah. Um, I oh, mean, yeah. it does less, just, right? Like you don't get a token or you don't get the, the map or the ult ability, which very often you don't anyway. But in general, yeah. I feel like um, this is just a more efficient way of card draw, which is really what Soren, I think, for the most part, is in the deck for, is just to refill the hand. Um, yeah, I mean, you literally curve out the five for Invoke Despair. Yeah, um, and then you're just done. Yeah. I mean, your whole hand, your max drop is five now. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I'm with if, you. If, um, if you're curving for X in Arena into Shielder, you don't care what's going on. You're living yeah. the life. Yeah, so yeah. it's just going to no, be that's what fair. It is. That's a good pick. I, I did. I mean, I knew obviously for X in Arena was going to be killer. I didn't think about putting a reprint on the list, to be honest. Uh, and yeah. so I skipped over a handful of reprints just in general, like for X in Obliterators in there, stuff like that. I just kind of skipped over it just because I was like, eh. <laughs> Uh, um, another four drop bomb that we're going to have to figure out how to deal yeah. with. Good yeah. lord. Which I will say, speaking of honorable mentions, um, <laughs> Phyrexian uh, Vindicator was on my list as an interesting one. I don't actually think it's as good in standard as it is in other formats for various reasons. I think I think there's a world where you just get this on the field, you deal as much damage as you can to it, and then you win the game on the spot. Um, <laughs> and like, there's a weird combo where that looks like really, really fun to me. I don't think that happens in standard, and so that's why I left it off the list. But Vindicator is kind of sick. It's for those of you who don't know, it's kind of a counterpart to Obliter Obliterator in a weird way. Um, but it's it's really cool. Um, but I will go into my last card. And John, I'm going to have to ask you not to laugh. Uh, because I, I picked if a wild card. If you say thrumming bird, if you say thrumming no, bird. No, it is okay. not thrumming bird. <laughs> I had, I picked an artifact. Uh, and the reason I picked an artifact is specifically because this is a Phyrexia set. I'm like, I have to have an artifact in there that's worth its while. I maybe didn't pick the best one, but I think it's a really silly build. Uh, and we'll talk about it. All right. It is <laughs> Graz, Unstoppable Juggernaut. Yes, you might not know what this card does, John, because you probably overlooked how great it is. And I understand why, because <laughs> okay. it's probably not that great. Eight I mana. I really thought you were going sword. No, I like sword. Uh, it, it's not my pick. Uh, eight mana for a seven five. OK, juggernauts you control attack each combat if able. OK, so they're all, all juggernauts have to attack. They can't be blocked by walls, which is pretty irrelevant. Uh, other creatures you control have base power and toughness five and three and are juggernauts in addition to their other creature types. Um, now, look, you might be looking at that card and thinking, wow, Kevin, why did you pick such a shitty card as your your final one? Because what's the point, right? It's terrible. Uh, it is not when you team it with cheap creatures and arms race, which is from Brothers War which is three and a red for an enchantment that says pay three and a red 
You can put an artifact card from your hand onto the battlefield, that artifact gains haste, and you sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So you spend the first couple turns getting a lot of cheap creatures out, doing what you need to do, on drawing some cards, doing whatever. Turn four, you get arms race down. Turn five, you get juggernaut down. And you win because you can just attack for an ass ton of damage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's stupid. It's a it's a content creator's <laughs> dream because it's absolutely not going to work. But I'm telling you, one day I will pull that <laughs> off and I cannot wait. It is going to be amazing. Man, no, I actually go for it, dude. I tell you, one of the cards that I've been playing here lately, and I we just chatted about it on the live stream, man. That I can't, I'm trying to get away from it. That Skitter Beam Battalion, dude. Oh, dude, the artifacts so are sneaky, but yeah, Skitter Beam Battalion, man, it'll come out of nowhere and slap you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. It's just like. Here, I'm going to do a casual six damage. Good luck. I'm going to do a casual 12 damage. That's the luck. Yeah, man. No, um, yeah, I love that trample haste style. And yeah. I, and God, man, who doesn't love sh shenanigans? If you don't yeah. like shenanigans, you're in the wrong game. You are in the wrong game <laughs> so, for sure. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, this is a this is a dream scenario. Obviously, guys, if I'm going to be. If I'm going to be very transparent, I don't think this card will be very good. However, I do think it will be very fun. And half the reason I play this game is to not be good and instead to try the fun stuff. And so for me, this is like right up my alley. It's a silly build around. I'm going to try it like I have to. Um, and there's so many cool things that you can do with it. And so I I don't know. I got to try it. I got to see if I can do it. Uh, I got to find a way to give everything trample because that's the only thing it doesn't give. Um, if it gave everything trample, it would be like, I think a little too easy, um, <clears throat> but we'll see. I don't know, man. And it's colorless. You're yes. talking about a red enchantment. There's plenty of red cards out there that'll give you trample. That's my thought. Uh, uh, I haven't built the deck yet, but it's in gruel. the. It could go gruel. I mean, that's the beauty of it, right? Is you can just pack it full of like cheapo things even colorless mm -hmm. things and it doesn't really matter it it almost doesn't matter what the creatures you are playing are uh because they just get boosted at the end of the day uh and so all you really have to do is keep them on the board uh and then give them trample and so that's that's the goal um we'll see if it works probably not but it's gonna be great Nah, we'll get it to work one time at least. One time. That's all we need. <laughs> that's, that's, that's hey man. Sometimes that's the goal. Oh, totally. Yeah. I'm gonna play 10 games. I lost nine, but I did some cool shit on 10. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's like half of the reason it resolves exists is just to do silly <laughs> shit like that. I just did some cool shit. You gotta yeah. see this. Who yeah. cares? Uh, mm -hmm. Nah, guys, it's going to be a fun time. Obviously, I, again, we're, we're coming to the end of the episode here in terms of the list, but I just want to say there are a ton of oh, really yeah. exciting cards in this one. Uh, there were a lot of cards that, again, I had to leave off the list and kind of cut because I just was like, I, I don't know. I can't pick them all. Um, I also think a lot of these cards will have places outside of standard that are going to be like definitely where they're going to be highlighted. Um, I think new Atraxa is interesting. Um, some people are a little pissed about new Atraxa, it looked like, but I actually really like it. Um, and I think there's a Man, lot of new stuff. So if a new set did, came out and nobody was pissed about something, oh, man, wizards, yeah. wizards did their Dude, job wrong. I have come <laughs> to the realization that as magic players, like wizards, granted, I don't think they are doing everything right, but if they did everything right, you know, by whatever secure metric we could we could measure on if they did everything right somebody would still find something to complain about because you know what we're magic players and that's what we do you just raise your hand <laughs> hell yeah <bro>. give me a <laughs> give me a minute i'll complain for 45 yeah, exactly. seconds <laughs> Nah, I get it. But I, I am really stoked about this set, guys. I think it's the shakeup we need. I hope that we can get some really fun builds out of this one. And I think there's enough here that we can at least prolong the fun a little longer than maybe in previous sets. So we'll see. Um, but it's going to be a great time. No doubt. Yeah, man. No, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Even this summer, just the way it's building the power yeah. levels of this one. Uh, I still think a lot of it's low to the ground. So yeah. it, 
makes it harder to break out the shell and try and find new meta. Yeah. But uh, no, nah, man, they gave us some good stuff. They gave they us did. some good stuff to play around with. They really did. Uh, it's going to be a blast, guys. So do look forward to some new deck builds over the coming weeks. Uh, we also will most likely, I think in the next episode, and John, correct me if I'm wrong, we'll probably have our first deck builds uh, as part of that for that next episode for the podcast. I might be wrong. Uh, I got to look at the schedule, but um, for, our, for for all for for Phyrexia, all will be one. We'll probably talk about our first deck builds. I think that's yeah. the next episode. Um yep. So really excited about that. I may make the Juggernaut build my first build. We'll see. Um, just to have some fun with it. No, you don't think so? <laughs> I would. No, no, go for it, dude. I'm going to. Man, not, fuck it. I'm not. We can't both be building the same one. No, of course not. Um, no, I've got some stupid stuff in the back of my mind. Yeah. Probably more towards the front of my mind if you ask my <laughs> wife. But um, yeah, man. No, I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be fun, guys. So do look forward to that and build along with us. If you've got deck ideas, send them to us. If you've got uh, some of your favorite cards from the new set, definitely share it in the comment section if you happen to be on YouTube. Uh, We really do appreciate it, guys. So definitely interact with us there. But uh, we are coming to the end of the episode, uh, which uh, we can talk about something non-magic related if you would like to, John. It's up to you. Or we can just end it. Do you got it? Do you got anything? Um. I mean, I still have that big news, which I can talk about now. Um, okay, but... well, let me let me go with mine first, and then you could close it without with that, right. man. Um, uh, God, man, I really don't have anything this week. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, so man, so look, um, my wife tweaked her back. <laughs> I've already told Kevin. This. I know this story. <laughs> I was sleeping. My yeah. wife tweaked her back a couple of days ago. Well, I guess this morning it got really, really, really bad. And uh, she was up doing stuff around the house and um, just pinched it wrong. So she's going to go to the doctor today. We're going to have her get a shot and stuff. Uh, and she's fine. It just hurts. But I'm sleeping. And the dog, one of our dogs sleeps in the bed with me after a certain amount uh, but anyway he sets up really fast and that startles me and i'm usually a heavy sleeper but he moves really fast and it startles me and i open my eyes now mind you this is my wife in the doorway of the bedroom but i can't see her because it's all shadows it's dark so she's five foot man and it's just <laughs> a shadow of this little woman in the doorway she's got tongs in her hand <laughs> like these freaking three foot long tongs because she's going to reach down to the cord with the tongs to get her iPhone plug. <laughs> My eyes are not adjusting to this, dude. And she took a step and it knocked the wind out of her. She did one of these. <laughs> I saw a shadow figure five foot tall with a three long in- or a three foot long instrument coming out of her hand, <laughs> making the whole... <laughs> noise man i about craft myself dude i came out of that bed so fast man uh, she she oh. did it's me it's me it's like yeah <laughs> sean that was so good i dude, love that I'm this t- happened to you <laughs> no man i don't i'm still uh, look there, even my camera can't focus now uh, i'm losing hair man my this receding hairline goes clear down man it's just it's yeah no dude man i lost i lost lives <laughs> i lost hair uh, yeah, man. Nah, scared the hell out of me bro i really yeah. I thought i was in the grudge i thought i was in the grudge man i get you that's a scary thing i totally get you i had a similar experience but i was like five at the time so i i can't compare i'm sorry <laughs> i was just like you gotta give me a heads up don't be doing that <laughs> crap no more. Uh, oh i love it that's why when you texted me so early, I texted right back. To, I couldn't go back to sleep after that. Yeah, I was kind of wondering. I was like, I didn't think Bro, I was up, up at like yet. five o'clock this morning because she scared the life right out of me. So. Yeah, to be clear, we're in t- different time zones. So mm-hmm. I'm up well before John most of the time. Uh, and so I texted you back because you had texted me yesterday about the episode. And I was like, mm-hmm. I need to remind myself to to text him back in the morning because I need to make sure I didn't have, you know, crazy work stuff going on and whatnot. And so I did. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So. 
I texted you expecting a response like an hour later. Yeah. You're like, cool, be ready in five. And I'm like, what? <laughs> it's it's like, like okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let me get a video <laughs> uploaded first. Um, but sure. Uh, nah, so. Nah, man. Well, I'm glad you made it through your traumatic event. Um, I did not. <laughs> I'm just here in spirit, bro. That's fine. <laughs> That's all we need. All right. That's all we need. Finish out the season. You're good to go. Um, <laughs> uh, well, I got big news. Uh, and John already knows this. Uh, he's yep. known for a couple of weeks now, as has a select few family members, friends, things like that. Uh, this is technically the first time that I'm announcing anything publicly, which I shouldn't, but nah, it's fine. Um, not enough people watch this that I know that would really care. Uh, guys, Caitlin's having a baby. Uh, Caitlin is pregnant. We just got kind of confirmation last week uh, that she's, you know, baby's happy and healthy. I say she as in Caitlin because we don't know the gender yet. Um, but uh, we are about, we're getting out of the first trimester now. Everything looks great. Uh, heartbeat, phenomenal, uh, active little guy, uh, whatever it is. And so we're, we are tremendously excited. Uh, because this is our first for anybody that doesn't know. Caitlin and I got married like a little over a year ago. Uh, and so this is our first little kid and we're excited about it. Uh, but it's due date is August 27th. So we got a little while, uh, but I'll keep you guys updated as we go along. And uh, yeah, dude, I I couldn't be more excited. I'm I'm nervous as hell, but I'm so stoked uh, to have oh, a little one running be. around. Nah, thanks. <laughs> Thank it's you. Like, I seem to get that bro, response a lot. <laughs> six. Six of them. Uh, yeah, that's a speaking lot. Speaking of which, the last one's out of the house right now. She's at a bowling Oh, hell tournament. yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, she only got three more months, I think. Yeah, Black dude. Red. Is it? No, nah, I guess it's about I guess it's about four more months that's not before bad. she heads off to college. Dude. No, man, it's going to be life changing, bro. But it's great, man. It's yeah. great. You're going to yeah. you're going to be great, dude. I'm so thank happy you, for you guys. Congratulations. Thank you, brother. John. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Man. Like I said, John has known for a while now. We've been talking yeah. about it. He's been giving me the advice that, you know, Swayze everybody asked. gives. But Swayze, Swayze asked, asked on his what? live stream. He will sl- Swayze listens to the podcast, man. Swayze, yeah, yeah. He, he does. He does a lot of podcast listening while he's at work so nah. he's explained um but he asked man he's like i'm really excited to hear about this big news i'm like i can't say nothing no nah, can't he would kill both of us yeah <laughs> swayze like, i would have to kill you no i'm just kidding uh swayze we're pregnant thank you there for you taking an interest in uh, my life i guess i don't the know podcast. i don't know the best way to phrase that the, well, podcast, the podcast really yeah the podcast um, he didn't it, he really didn't know what it was no he yeah, just yeah. we had said on the last one that it was big news but no yeah. man seriously congratulations to thank both you, of you thank you so, thank you yeah i'm so excited man i'm excited yes. i'm really excited uh babies yeah. that aren't mine <laughs> yeah dude um i like it's been kind of crazy uh because like normally uh, to be to. So Caitlin's the extrovert in our relationship, which means I'm the one that wants to stay home and not talk to anybody. Hence, if you've commented on a video and I haven't responded, it's not because I don't like you and I don't appreciate it. It's because I'm an introvert and I don't like despite having a YouTube channel being put out there all that much. Um, <laughs> and so I, I tend to just want to sit behind my desk and do my work and, and let it be. Um, but uh, lately, it's been a bit of a role reversal because I'm now the one that's like, oh, let's let's go out and, you know, grab dinner or something like that. And she's like, oh, I can't have a drink or oh, oh, yeah. I'm so tired. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I get oh, it. Man. I get it. Um, so it is what it is. But she's watch, handling it like a champ. shellfish and all that <laughs> yeah. kind of stuff, too, man. You have Lord. to watch so many things. It's ridiculous. I'm so um, glad. I'm so glad when I was pregnant, when, when she was never again. But when she was, <laughs> it wasn't me, man. I didn't have to cut anything out. I did my part. I did, <laughs> I my, did part. my part. <laughs> 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 yeah. I did have a cigar uh, a couple of weeks ago. Nice. Um, we like sat out and we were just reading like we it was a nice day. It was really nice and warm out, sunny. And so we sat out on our front porch and um, we were both reading our books and whatnot. And I was like, I could go for a cigar. And she was she just kind of looked at me like you asshole. 
And then she was like, no, it's fine. Whatever. I'll just sit a little over here. And I'm like, I don't have to have a cigar. <laughs> and she's like, it's fine. Have the cigar. <laughs> and she like got a little mad, but uh, it was fine. It was worth it. It was a good cigar. Yeah, man. Good deal. Good deal. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Congratulations, brother. Thank you, man. man. I appreciate it so much. Uh, it really is going to be an exciting time. And again, I'll I'll fill everybody in as we go along and all that stuff on any important stuff. But right now we're just we're, we're excited to be having a little one. Yeah. So. And I don't care, man, boy or girl. It doesn't matter to me. You're no. getting a Kansas City Chiefs onesie. So it's oh, oh, good speaking Lord. Of which, <laughs> the AFC championship games this weekend. So. There it is. Go there Chiefs. it is. Go I Chiefs. know nothing about football. As most oh, of you know. It's man, it's gonna be a rough game, dude. It's Chiefs and Bengals. Bengals have beat the Chiefs the last <laughs> three times they've played. So uh, but it is at Arrowhead, which is the Chiefs. So I'm I'm hoping. I'm hoping. But man, I wish you yeah. the best of luck. Me too. <laughs> is it <laughs> not? I'm a powder. No. Yes. I've never played magic with yes. you. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, dude. Dude, I'm so Oh, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine, man. It'll be fine. It'll be a such fun weekend. A, such an angry introvert. <laughs> nah, I get you. I get you. It is weird that we are both introverted and we are like here on YouTube making content and shit like that. Yeah, man. It doesn't make much sense. Yeah, because I can't, I can't act for shit. I can't hide my feelings, man. Sometimes it, I know it's got to be awkward watching live streams. Sometimes I just, I'm like, fuck this game, screw the world, <laughs> fuck everybody. <laughs> you all suck. I'm actually Pinky okay. I think I'm okay at like hiding when I'm really upset because I just stay <laughs> as positive as I can. But like, I, I don't know. I'm not great at being like talkative and shit like that. I hate it. Nah, man, yeah, yeah. we're so good for it. We're so good. We're so good. <laughs> the fact that we chose to be personalities <laughs> on a magic channel. <laughs> and we got. <laughs> we are the perfect people for this job. And unrelated news if there are any extroverts out there that are looking for a position and love the game of magic, we would love to chat with you. Yeah. Uh, no. How do you do it? How do you wake honestly, up in the morning? I work. mean, honestly, are you t are you doing cold baths, fifteen minute <laughs> ice baths in the morning? What's going? No, I'm just kidding, man. But no, yeah. no, it's fun. I'm not an extrovert at all, but yeah, it is fun. Uh, I like doing this kind of stuff. But yeah, man, anyway. I love it. Guys, that is going to wrap up our episode for Phyrexia All Will Be One. Those are our top picks uh for for the next uh couple well for the for the first few weeks the cards that i'm anticipating at least trying uh right away uh and i'm really excited about it so yeah yep yep definitely some interesting picks looking forward Absolutely. to it brother yeah, and dude. again congratulations man Big thank news. you man i do appreciate yes. it i do appreciate it guys thank you so much for watching listening wherever you are doing it however you are doing it please make sure you do subscribe to our youtube channel again we've got a 10,000 subscriber giveaway going on tons of giveaway stuff including standard boxes digital altars uh and a secret layer that john has put up so this is going to be a blast guys definitely subscribe to the channel and thank you guys again for watching it's been a glorious day my name is kevin i'm john yes that was it <laughs> Have a great Stay day, safe. guys. Be happy and healthy. Much love. Peace. Go Chiefs. <laughs> Go Chiefs. <laughs>